In this video, you'll hear from GM employees who all work at different plants and offices as they share their specific roles in the car building process, from the designers to the assembly line workers and everyone in between. It varies so much. You might be looking at a few years, and then in another case, when the technology is not quite ready, we may start a vehicle and then maybe need to pause it to, to find a better solution and ideas live and die and come back to life. And so it can be anywhere from a couple years to sometimes maybe close to a decade. A plant is very complex and it takes a lot of different disciplines to be able to ensure that it runs. The workers on the line produce the car. They're the ones who are putting it, actually putting it together. But the engineers designed that car. They figured out how to put it together and make it work. Designers came up with, you know, the colors and, you know, the style of the vehicle and you know, the materials that go inside of it to uh, make customers appreciate it and want to buy it. It takes a village of employees to ensure that that car is made responsibly. You'll kick off a project where maybe your, your manager or the company comes to this, this group of designers and they'll say, there's an opportunity for a vehicle. It's, it roughly sits in this size and space, but we're not really sure what it wants to be. Show us what you think your vision is for that vehicle. It could be the next this or the next that. Maybe it's something we've done in the past that we're reinventing, or maybe it's something completely new. The team will start with quite a bit of research. So for example, if the vehicle needs to perform a certain function or accommodate a certain number of people. That's information that the team will take and make a note of and they'll certainly have that in mind as they start to explore different ideas. They'll uh, usually, depending on the brand, they'll want to kind of put together maybe an, an image board or an inspiration board that shows what the, what the feeling of the vehicle should be. Perhaps what it should look like or what you should feel when you walk up to the vehicle. It always amazed me when you kind of think you've seen it all and then you walk through the studios and you see what the designers have on their sketch pads. There's a lot of very talented, brilliant designers. How do we make our vehicles so that they meet needs for as many different people as possible? When we have a range of needs and abilities that people have, how do we make sure that all of those people can use our vehicles well? You really need those users that you're designing for as part of the conversation. So if I'm designing for somebody who's a wheelchair user, I need their feedback, I need their input, because I can make assumptions, but my assumptions probably aren't always gonna be right. I am the person that creates all the leathers, the paints, the grains, the fabric, so we can visualize the cars virtually in the computer before we actually go to the actual factory or anything like that. The designer will see something, he wants to see it made. It gets created, we create until everything fits together for the designer. It's really that mixture of of science or, or the technical where you have those requirements that are very straightforward and then you have the creative side of that which is how you want to connect those dots so you have the height you have the visibility you have the ergonomics you have the reach those are concrete points but then also digitally which is where we have really talented digital sculptors that will make 3d models just like in your favorite movie and you know those talented individuals will create these, uh, these mock-ups of the designs that we've been exploring and we'll kind of evaluate them. And then of course that design will become more refined as the design develops and you become more convinced that it's, that it's the right way to go. And then eventually, you know, we'll put together a very realistic looking model that has 3D printed parts and they're all finished and wrapped in a way that almost looks like a real car. Every now and then, we'll have a group of people come into our shops and they'll say, oh, this is a nice truck. Oh, I want to see the inside. And they'll pull on the door handle, but it's a model. It's not a real door handle. So they'll yank the door handle off or some people will step on, you know, uh, what they think is a real running board or a step and it'll break off. And, you know, they're feeling really bad. You know what I mean? I didn't know it was fake. It's like, well, that's, that means we did our job well. Other times we're getting in vehicles, there's clay models of vehicles. And we'll actually get in and sit in the vehicle and interact with it and try, see if we can reach something. See if you can see the screen or if the steering wheel blocks it. Can you see the turn signal? So it's a lot of physical reviews when we're in the office and we do a lot of clinics to know what people want. So we bring in dozens of people around a specific item and we ask them questions or ask them to interact with 
screen reach, for instance. And we know where something needs to go for a customer to be satisfied with the reach. We know where people want USB ports. We know people want them on a top surface where they can see them, but then they also want them in a bin so they can put their phone away while they're driving. So we need to give people both options. It's not one solution that fits everyone. Sometimes that happens, but usually you need multiple solutions to fit the different types of users. I work at a test facility, so here is very unusual. We have a lot of different waste streams. We have a lot of small waste streams because we do a lot of little things a couple times, whereas at a production facility, you're making you know, a, a lot of vehicles. We're just making a couple and we're just testing a couple. Once it works and it's proved out that way, then it goes into a production cycle and it's mass produced. So you have mechanical engineers that design a physical product that has strength and, and weaknesses and um, then the electrical engineer comes along and says, here's how we give it power, here's the switches and sensors that we need. And then the industrial engineer comes along and says, how do we make one of those come off the end of the assembly line every 30 seconds or every minute or how do we manufacture a million of these over the next year? And part of manufacturing is people are physically putting these pieces on the vehicle. We build the six-speed transmissions. It starts from just a plain empty case. And once it makes it around the whole line, is a full-blown transmission from the valve bodies to like the housings that are in it, to all the different hubs that are in it, to the torque converter. It's, it's incredible to watch it. I still walk around my line and just watch it be made. It's just, it surprises me every single day. We make two things. We make engines and transmissions, and we do everything from machining the parts for the engine, and also the assembly line where we put the engine together. And then same thing on the transmission side. You'll have like machining where they'll make the gears and the prismatics and cases and everything that goes into the transmission. And then you have the assembly line where you put it all together. After we test our transmissions, we will ship them out to a major assembly plant where the car is actually built. So uh, the bodies of the cars, the uh, engines, transmissions, uh, axles, tires, everything will be brought together at that plant and, and assembled. Uh, we're just one, one part of the, the path. Every transmission is different and they're kind of designed around their purpose. Our production team is always juggling while balancing. They are always trying to decide with the resources they have, what they should build to meet customer demand. So we will be running multiple variants and models at the same time. Sub-assemblies will have their own models and variants that will be feeding into the main lines, and we'll be trying to balance that all day. We're supposed to make 1,161 heavy-duty trucks every day, and when you say that in terms of, we build 1,161 trucks a day, that's pretty amazing. And for me, it's really in providing people with the ability to have transportation, and I'm a part of that. As a maintenance lead, my job is to find out what problems are preventing us from reaching throughput, right? And throughput is how, if the customer needs an engine or a car, right, and we need to make 60 cars a day, but we only made 50 today, why did we make 50, and how can tomorrow and moving forward we always make 60? My job is to make the vehicles more sustainable, working with our suppliers to get more recycled content, bio-based content, lower carbon materials into our vehicles. Being an environmental engineer at a GM site means that you handle a lot of materials that need to be diverted from landfill. So we look for more environmentally friendly ways to dispose of plastics and metals. It might be something that the customer can even see so they could touch it and, and they see that this is something that was made from recycled water bottles or fish nets from the ocean or whatever it is. Then taking that, going through all of the materials testing, working with labs to, to make sure that the material will perform the way we need it to and then taking it to our engineering teams and saying like, look what I've got, you know, you could put it in your next vehicle. Electric vehicles, they don't need gas, they don't need to fuel up. They can just plug in, be powered by electricity and just keep going pretty much. And they're very fast and they make no noise at all. My favorite part is at the very end when we do final assembly on a vehicle, we're scrambling, <laughs> going wild, but then within a couple days, you see that product finish that you've been working on for months and it's just breathtaking and rewarding, very, very rewarding. 
the commercial for the lyric came out and I immediately sent it to everybody. And so I was like, see, I am working on something. Here it is, I worked on this, I did this. And that was super exciting. It's great to be able to show people what you do because that is what I wanted to do as a career. I wanted to create something and be able to share it and see people's reactions and emotions to it, negative or positive. I just wanted to be able to create something and feel rewarded for it. And I think the lyric for me was that. And more so than that, I will never forget coming out of the movie theater, going into the parking lot and seeing it pull out of the parking lot. Every vehicle that I see that's a GM vehicle, especially the new ones that are coming out, makes me excited. I want to knock on their window and like, I help build that. <laughs> I think we are at a very good time in life where it's even like GM, one would say that they make cars, but I would say that they are thinking way beyond that and being part of that momentum and that thinking I think that's something which I would say I'm contributing and defining the future. The other thing that's really special about cars is uh, quite a few people interact with them at some point in their daily life. And so you might create or design something and it touches families and lives all over the world. People you'll never meet will, will kind of touch a surface that you refined and sketched in the studio. Maybe you, you, you got an idea one night and you came into the studio and you executed it and, it and it came to life. We're fortunate enough that we have one of the greatest products in the world. I'm the start of the build in the body shop. So putting families in these trucks. So if there's nothing else, our families, your families, uh, you know, the world's families are in these trucks. These can either be trucks that you're taking trips on, uh, working trucks that we're rebuilding communities, um, trucks that we're just enjoying, enjoying our family. So there's nothing better than um, building a product that everyone can connect to in some way, form, or fashion. Thanks to our friends at GM for walking us through the process of building a car. They use many skills every day to build cars, including communication, teamwork, creativity, problem solving, inclusivity, empathy, resilience, a leadership mindset, and every aspect of STEM. In the next episodes, you'll learn how important these skills are to their jobs and in their personal lives.